Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tom Houck. Welcome to Somerset Presbyterian Church today on Pentecost as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Also, as we approach Memorial Day, we would like to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. For the service today, we will be using recorded music, and please bear with us. Unfortunately, Mary Jane is in the hospital. Please keep her in our prayers, in your prayers. We thank Jake Jones for leading the singing. And there may be times where we'll start out with the recorded music, and we may have to stop it, but just keep singing. We're just rolling with the punches at this point. A mini prom dance for children ages 5 to 10 will be held on Saturday, June 10th from 12 noon to 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The theme is Midnight Summer Dream with Prince and Princess attire. All are welcome. The cost is $15 per child and $10 for parents, and reservations are due by June 9th. We also appreciate all volunteers who would like to help. For more information, please see the bulletin or contract, contact Barbara Nickel. Please check out all our announcements and the prayer list in the bulletin and on the SBC website. Let us worship God. gathering so many centuries ago. Breathe in us your new creation that we may be renewed and revived to be your people once more. Speak through our differences and our diversity and bind us together in unity and love. Amen. All who are able, please stand. Let's join together in our call to worship. Coming from different places, 
bringing different gifts. We come to offer ourselves as we are, blessed by one spirit. We bring our unity of gratitude and praise. Let us remain standing as we sing hymn number 130, Let Every Christian Pray. It's the same tune as when morning gilds the skies. and prayer of confession. Refreshing wind of God, whisper the truth of your love to us. Where we are breathless with sin and regret, breathe new life into us through your mercy and your grace. Where we stand firm in our divisions, remold us with your mighty power that we might rise in unity and love. Renewing wind of the Spirit, Help us recognize our gifts, that we may use them for your glory. For we yearn to proclaim your presence in all that we say and in all that we do. In your holy presence we pray. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silent reflection. Our assurance of pardon. All who call upon the name of God are saved. By calling on God and confessing our sins, the Holy Spirit recreates us anew and saves us by Christ's grace. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join me in singing praises to God for the gift of grace, the Gloria Patri, in number 579.
peace of Christ be with you. With signs of unity and love and with God's inexhaustible blessing, let us share signs of Christ's peace with one another with a parade wave. You may be seated. Even if we 
I mean, it's even if sometimes we are not really paying attention, sometimes the Holy Spirit nudges us so that we will know what God wants us to do, or the Holy Spirit may nudge us and say, hey, don't do that. So I'm going to give you one of these to remind you of Pentecost. And John, there's one for you too. You want to pass that on over to John? And that is to remind us of the gift that God gave us, because this is truly a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit who resides within us, dwells within us, to help us be able to do God's will. We can't do it on our own. So let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, for sending the Holy Spirit to us to help us to be open to the Holy Spirit so we may fulfill your mission for the church in our lives. Help us to celebrate this day of Pentecost, the birthday of your church. And may we also remember those who fought the spiritual battle against evil and tyranny, who gave their lives so we can worship and honor you in a way that we see fit to do so in our conscious dictates. Amen. You can go to Sunday school. Thank you, John. pray with me. Spirit of God, call us to do your holy calling. Inspire us with your powerful presence and strengthen our faith with your holy word. In gratitude and trust we pray. Amen. Now our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Numbers chapter 11 verses 24 through 30. And this is from the NIV version. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said, and he brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. And then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him, and he put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Elad and Medad had remained in the camp, and they were listed among the elders, but they did not go to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. So I picked that particular passage today to show that the Holy Spirit was working in the Old Testament, just not in the fullness that we realize it now through the Spirit at the day of Pentecost and what is on the church at this time. Our first New Testament reading comes from John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39. And on the last day and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink, and whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. But th by this he meant that the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. And up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So there was the promise of the Holy Spirit there for his disciples. And in the second New Testament reading in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. In other words, in other languages. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native tongue? Parthians, Medes, and the Lamanites, 
residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? And some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. And then Peter addresses the crowd. Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. So as many of you are aware, my family and I just recently went on vacation. So that was one of the reasons why I wasn't here. And as is our usual custom, we peruse the gift shops looking at funny signs and magnets and showing each other these signs and laughing and just having a good old time. And if something particularly stands out to us, and um, if it has relevance for me here at the church, either they will bring it to my attention or I will, get, I will um, buy it myself. And so this year, one, the one that caught my eye was this magnet that said, apparently rock bottom has a basement. Now, if you've ever had one of those days, those months, those years, where everything seems to be going wrong and you think you hit rock bottom and then the bottom just keeps getting larger and larger, this sign will definitely speak to you. And what this magnet reminded me of was the dilemma the disciples were in 40 days earlier. And so I'm just going to give a little recap. Even though Jesus was persecuted by the religious and political e political out leaders during the, his earthly ministry, they were at least had the hope that he would take care of these things for them. And then he was crucified on a cross, and all their hopes for the Messiah and his kingdom died on that cross. And then they, when they thought it couldn't get any worse, and they were hiding behind locked doors for fear of their own lives, then in the midst of that heartache, they were visited by what at first they thought might have thought was a specter, a ghost. Talk about the basement of rock bottom. Yet then hope blossomed again. Jesus reassured them by speaking his customary greeting, peace be with you, and showing them his wounds so that they would recognize him. It wasn't a specter, but Jesus in his resurrected body. And Jesus appeared to his disciples in the upper room and breathed his spirit upon them to give them shalom, peace, only as God can give. So that's what we read in other passages in prior weeks before all of this. So Jesus proceeds to show up all over the Judean countryside to those he, Jesus, loved. And many times he promised his disciples that they would receive his spirit and power from on high to continue his ministry, but they must wait for it. And now we can, in Acts 1, it tells us, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John, the Bapt John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. So any of those who try to predict the end of the age, they can't, because right this passage here tells you they do, that nobody knows except for the Father. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses 
telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud. And today we celebrate that promised day, when Jesus' disciples receive that power from on high, the day we call Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And we are told the disciples were in an upper room again when they heard that sound like the rush of violent wind. And there appear what look like divided tongues, many tongues, as the fire with a tongue resting on each of them. Now the dove has always been a symbol of God's spirit. And if you recall in Luke's gospel, John the Baptist prophesies that the Messiah will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And God's spirit descended upon Jesus when he was baptized. I'm going to read you that passage. John 3 tells us, after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my de dearly beloved Son, who brings me great joy. And in our sanctuary today, we have set up several things that help us visualize what the disciples describes what happened that day. And when I picture this scene in my mind, I picture the flames in the shape of a dove flying downward like I do have on the balloons here. And, and um, it would appear above each per person something similar to that dove. And then I picture someone in a robe similar to mine, figure, with outstretched arms, which represent the disciples waiting in open anticipation for the gift of the Holy Spirit. This kind of, this gesture kind of says, I'm open, God. I'm open to what you call me to do. I'm open for your spirit. And as I was at a pastoral conference this last week, and that was why I was gone the second week, I was reminded of one of the values of waiting and anticipating. I was in a class entitled, Nurturing Your Own Spiritual Life. In it we did the Lectio Divina where scripture is read and we are asked to immerse ourselves into the scripture. And I did that for you around Easter time. And to listen to what the Holy Spirit is bringing forward to us in the passage. And the passage was from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Then Jesus said, come to, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. For me, that really spoke to me the first time I've heard it and every time I've heard it since. Because don't we bear heavy burdens in our life? Don't we want to have someone to walk beside us? Someone that will be equally yoked to us? And if you, those of you who are not familiar with what a yoke is, it's what they use to put the two oxen together. So you hold them both and they go together at the same, the same pace. And so Jesus says, put my yoke upon you. So in other words, he's walking right next to you. And as I thought about that passage and the passage from Acts to about Pentecost, I couldn't help but make the connection that Jesus gives us rest for our souls. And when we are yoked to him, we are to walk beside him and learn from him. His yoke is not cumbersome and there is only a light burden. Therefore, if I'm going to do his will his ministry, that it must be done his way with his timing. I can't go ahead on my own, and if I do that, that's when it becomes burdensome. I must wait for his help, his helper, the Holy Spirit. And I was convicted of this one time because my, my children were young and the car was breaking down and I had all kinds of things going on in my life. And I, rem and I was listening to Radio Bible on my, on my car radio, and I heard this passage and they started talking about it. And all of a sudden I was like, felt relieved. I felt relieved of that burden of life, knowing that Jesus is there with me and I, don't, I can give that burden to him. And I was at this, the new pastoral conference this past week and we were talking about Pentecost and telling stories about some of the church experiences. And one pastor mentioned a true story that, she ha that happened at the church she was working at before she got there. 
So it was Pentecost Sunday, and the church had to put up a display of candles for the service. And at the end of the church service, a congregant approached the pastor and said, You are on fire! And the pastor was thrilled to hear this comment and said, Thank you! Thinking the parishioner was commenting on how exciting the sermon was. Well, you can figure out what happened. The pa pastor, the parishioner repeated, No, pastor, you're on fire. Your robe is on fire. So, friends, many times we think we're setting the world on fire with our time and our efforts we put into our church projects or our well-crafted worship services. And for us pastors, the sermons with the witty repertoire, repartee and the phenomenal stories and or great theological insights, when in fact, we ourselves are just getting burned out instead. And Jesus tells us that he is the vine and we are the branches and without him, we can do nothing meaning we cannot bear fruit on our own, and so I encourage us not to put our efforts into things that do not have eternal value. And I've had to reevaluate my, re my life many times so that I would not, was not putting my time into things that didn't have eternal value. Sure, we may encounter some worldly success by doing it our way, but if we are not grounded in Christ, then our efforts are in vain, and we end up exhausting ourselves in the process. And there have been many times in my life when God has used situations where I've had to learn to trust the Holy Spirit to help me, where I needed to wait on God's timing and be open to the Spirit's leading. And each person's experience is different depending on their aversion to trust. So if you don't trust easily, then God knows that and God will work and do things differently in your life than someone who has had good experiences and is more trusting. Now, it is good to be a little wary because there are times when people are out to deceive you. So there is, a, it's hard to say what's the right, right amount of trust and what isn't. The Bible will help you and the Holy Spirit will lead you. We are told in Luke's Gospel and his follow-up manuscript, Acts, the spirit responsible for the birth of Jesus is responsible for the birth of the church. And the parallel birth narratives in each story, with church membership in decline all over the United States and mainline denominations, it may not appear that we are still in the age of the church. And while God may be closing the door in one area, God is opening it in another that is bearing fruit. And many times it's where the movement of the Spirit is not restricted by old frameworks and where God's people are more willing to follow God's leading instead of their own ways. Where they are able to embrace the changes God is calling to them to make, to reach out to an, in a new way. And we are able to do this by stepping into the light of God's love. God's love will help us to be more trusting when we learn to trust in God. And God it does it at a pace that is comfortable for each and every one of us. And when we are in God's love, we will feel safe to make mistakes and try new things. So one of the workshops that we did during my pastoral's conference was improvisation. And I was learning, it was learning through doing activities instead of the sage on the stage model. So the sage on the stage is like somebody like me standing up here and talking and you're listening. And in this particular model, we were all actively participating. And the things we were taught that in that improv is supporting each other's ideas. So that was one of the important lessons they wanted us to take home from this pastor's conference. Life is always transitioning from one thing to another, and we're going to make mistakes. And it's okay, just learn from them. So the first exercise we did was to get into groups of two people and we would take turns saying one then to the other, three to each other. Now, it's a little hard when I'm saying it out loud. And then if we miscounted, then we would say I made a mistake. So I need two volunteers to show this, to example this. Or at least one volunteer will come up and do it with me. Jake, you gonna come up? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna start off. Can everybody still hear me?
So I'll start off by saying one, and then you're going to say two, and then I'm going to say three, and then you're going to say one, and, I'm gonna, and we're going to keep going until we make a mistake. And when we make the mistake, we're going to say, we made a mistake with our hands up in the air. Okay? One. Two. Three. Four. I made a, we, made, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. Let's try it again. One. One. <laughs> we made a mistake. <laughs> So, what we did two other exercises similar to that, um, and we were, we were saying we made a mistake when we did make a mistake. And it was to help us realize that at the end of the workshop that it's okay to make mistakes, and that when people feel safe and supported to make mistakes, then we can be more creative. So in other words, go ahead and make that little mistake and we'll work around it, we'll keep going. And, and it was fun, we were laughing, we had a good time, and then the creative energies came about. And we were able to be more creative, more productive than we would have if we were worried about making a mistake. That perfectionism it kills your, your, your creativity. And similarly, when we realize we are not perfect and it is only by God's grace and the help of the Holy Spirit, that we can live the Christian life, then we are more willing to step out in faith and try new things and trust the Holy Spirit to lead us. So, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what happened when they were, when they were in the, um, the situation. Similarly, we realize when we're not perfect, Sorry, I lost my place. Give me one second here. This is always the thing I was feared when I was up here. I feared I would lose my place, so I made a mistake. Okay? Okay, so um, I, for some reason I'm not quite sure, but it, the next part of it was, um, so all of them were at the particular point in our passage, all of the people were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So they trusted in God. They trusted what Jesus told them. They trusted in what the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, and they opened themselves up. And again, you have, having your arms open is you're open to new ideas. And these tongues of fire were for witnessing to people with other languages. And our lectionary passage highlights the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelism, telling other people about God. And many times we shy away from talking about our faith but one of the primary purposes as Christians is evangelism. Telling other people about Jesus and then our part in that story. Remember, as Presbyterians like to say, and you're going to hear me say this over and over again, because it's a cute little saying that helps us remember what our purpose is. We are saved to serve. And that comes from Romans chapter 15 and 16, if you read it. And I would like to add, as God's faithful witnesses. And one of my favorite hymns reminds us of this. And some of you may be familiar with the modern hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. And later you'll be hearing this melody in the postlude. And when you have time, I encourage you to seek it out on YouTube and listen to it. So I'm going to read it to you, because my singing, I'm, I've, I've been told, my singing voice is so-so. So I'll do it in the shower, I'll do it at home, but I'm not going to do it up here. Lord, the light of your love is shining, in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. And then the chorus begins. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word and let there be light. And then, Lord, I come into your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume me, all my darkness. Shine on me, shine on me. And then the chorus again. And then the last verse is, as we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, your Christ-likeness. Ever-changing from glory to glory, mirrored here in our lives, tell your story. So it's not just hearing, it's doing. Shine on me, 
shine on me. So you got that image of light in there. And whether it's an older or new hymn or spiritual song, they have the capacity to remind us of the great spiritual truths and this, what scripture reveals to us about that. Jesus' light is a reflection of the Father's glory. Jesus sends the help of the Holy Spirit to give us an all-consuming passion similar to that fire that consumes us on its path, all in its path. And the fire will burn so hot it will blaze and spread all over. But it's a good blaze, a blaze of love and mercy through God's word, which will bring light to the dark places and the evil places of the world. And on this memorial... Day weekend, we will later remember those in our country who gave their lives in service to this country to preserve its freedom, to preserve the light that we will be able to live free from tyranny and oppression, to be able to live free from to worship and serve God as our conscience dictates. So I want you to think about all of this. Think about the spirit and think about how let, opening yourself up to the spirit. Think about not being, not being so perfect and allowing yourself to make mistakes and allowing everyone around you to make mistakes as well. And also to remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives so that we can live in freedom and worship God without persecution. Amen. So let us now stand and sing hymn number 316, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and whenever Tom is ready, because this is something new for us, so just want to get you ready. of faith, the Apostles' Creed. So let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So today's prayer I, I had gotten online from the Baptist Union of Great Britain, and it's a beautiful prayer for, for Pentecost, so I want to share it with you, and I've shared it with you once before. Will you pray with me? 
ever-living and ever-loving God, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit, and take and transform our societies, that broken people find healing, that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, that fearful people find hope. Come, Holy Spirit, and take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communion can be open, that relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church, that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you, that our prayers will change our minds instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in the real world. O oh Lord, comfort and relieve all who are in trouble, sorrow, poverty, sickness, and grief, especially those known to whom we name before you today, Mary Jane and Gladys, Wally and Mike, Lloyd, Christy, Calvin, Millie, Ronald, Betty, Fran, Terry, Alicia, Gary, Nancy, Marianne, Louisa, Cindy, Vivian, Edmina, Jeanette, Mercedes, the family of Betty, and the family of James. Heal them in body, mind, or in circumstances, working in them by your grace, wonders beyond all they may dream or hope. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence, so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others, to the glory of your name. And may we all say the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, bring your gifts, whatever they may be, for together we possess all that we need to bless God's world. Now there are four ways that you can send in your offering. You can send it in through regular mail, drop it in at the church office, or make a donation through PayPal on the church website. Or you can place it in the offering plate as it is passed around.
are able, please stand and join me in the doxology. <coughs> Let's give Tom a minute to get to it. Sorry, Tom. I made a mistake. Traditionally observed on May 30th, it is now observed on the last Monday of May as a federal holiday since 1971. Original Memorial Day honored Americans who gave their lives during the Civil War. Now it includes those who died in the Spanish-American War, World Wars I and II, Korea and Vietnam. New additions to the growing list include Operation Desert Storm, Afghanistan, Somalia, Bosnia, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation Iraq Freedom. Unfortunately, we have somehow lost touch with the true meaning of Memorial Day. Stores are open with super sales all weekend. Car dealers are offering gigantic deals. It is a day off from work or school, a good reason for a picnic or a barbecue, and an unofficial beginning of summer. We may not all agree with the concept of war, but none can deny the toll it has taken on those who have served in military. As horrible a concept as it is, this nation was founded on a war, a revolutionary one. It was later divided by war and reunited in abolition. It grew strong and reached out to other lands to help them defend their simple things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In the process of countless Countless soldiers, airmen, and sailors uh, gave their lives. Memorials are about loss and sacrifice, but also about perseverance and triumph. May we be eternally grateful to those who served and died, defending us and our rights and freedoms. Freedom is not free. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, in your infinite mercy, Bless the souls of the nation's heroes and have, who have fallen in battle. Protect the lives of the troops who protect us and provide healing and strength to the families that love them. Amen. May you have a safe Memorial Day holiday. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good morning to everyone. I'm Ellen Jake Jones and uh, uh, it is a blessing for me to be here today to honor our deceased veterans. It is a very close thing to me because I was explaining to Pastor that two of my best friends um, who were in high school um, died in Vietnam as a result of this, this war, these wars. Um, and one of my friends lived within striking distance of my house. I could just reach across the fence and touch his yard. 
And sadly, um, Mr. Austin had three, four sons. Three of his sons served in the military, and two were injured in Korea. And this other son, his baby son, um, was killed in Vietnam. And when the military people arrived at the house to tell him that his baby son had passed away, he collapsed and dropped dead right on the spot. So sadly, um, Mrs. Alston and our family, all the families, had to get together with them and thank God we got them through it. So it's just a memory um, on me that I'd like to share with you. The other thing I want to share with you, you see me wearing a hat. You say, well, what is he wearing a hat inside of a bill? And we call it covered in the Army. And the two basic times that you can be covered, one, always outside when you're outside, but inside when there is a service of military significance or relationships. So I'm covered today in um, respect for our veterans. The piece that I selected this morning, um, I will try to sing for you, is called Eternal Father Strong to Save. This piece uh, was written by William Whiting in 1860. It's commonly referred to as the Navy Hymn. However, we've used this hymn to just recognize all of our brothers and veterans and comrades who have uh, passed away or died uh, in the conflict of Vietnam and afterwards in all of the previous wars that we've had, senseless wars, I say, senseless wars. So without, with this note, um, I will attempt to sing this piece, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Eternal Father, strong to, strong to save, whose arms has bound the restless wave, who bade the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. Oh,
So on this Memorial Day weekend, I'd like you to take a moment to think about someone you know, and I'm sure we all have someone we know that has had someone who has died in the service of our country. And I'd also like to th for you to take some time to think about the sacrifices of people that you know who have been in the military but are still here or among us. A few of our veterans who are here today, like John and like Jake. Are there any other veterans here today uh, that served in our country? Terry, I believe you did too, right? Can you raise your hand or stand up, please? And Al? Okay. So first, let's thank them. Please stand. Uh, did you uh, serve too, Willie? Okay. So let's give a round of applause to the veterans. Thank you for your service and for, for preserving our freedoms. So may God bless you for that. Thank you. And now we, we all take a moment of silence. I'll, I'll count to 30 and think about someone that you know that has served our country and given the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to remind you that following worship service, Coffee Hour will be in fellowship hall. Our hosts today are Kathy and John Diley. Um, so we'd like to thank them for doing that. I'd also like to thank Tom and Kathy Hawk, who stepped up when Mary Jane, um, we were found out that Mary Jane was in the hospital, and for Jake also, who filled in the gaps where we needed it for our worship service today so we could have music and that we everything would go seamlessly. I know Kathy was working behind the scenes all this weekend trying to work, figure this out um, when she found out, I guess it was like Friday or Saturday, correct? Um, so we want to let's give them a round of applause for stepping up and doing that. Thank you very much. So I'd like us to please stand and sing our closing hymn. We'll just give Tom a minute to go get that set up. It's hymn number 564, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
wonderful hymn. It has a lot of biblical principles in it, and it reminds us to put our eyes on Jesus and that alabaster city um, that's waiting for us for all eternity. And in the meantime, may we be brothers and sisters to one another. And as you have blessed this gathering, bless us as we share your gifts. Bless us to be one body. Bless us to be one holy church. Amen. Now listen to Shine Jesus Shine Lee. Hidden glory in creation 
What a beautiful name it is, the name. 